this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills, and uh, yes, I did just get back from my garden not too long ago, and I broke my own rule today, and I overdid it, so I'm a little bit exhausted. And I made myself a nice hot cup of tea with honey and some toast with my homemade bread and homemade jam. Um, so yeah, no, I'm just kicking back, relaxing a little bit, and uh, thinking about, uh, of course, Thoughts that ran through my mind while you're in the garden working alone. And <clears throat> and yes, there was another young lady who came by and I checked out what she did in her little plot after on my way out. And uh, she was already gone by then. And uh, quite interesting what other people do. And everything that I've put into that garden, I have to take away, or should I say any physical thing that I put in there I have to remove should I give it up. So all my tea posts and all my fence would have to come down and in that respect I made sure that uh, whatever I do put up that is physical is not that difficult to remove as well. The fencing, well I may just end up leaving that for somebody who may want it, but the tea posts I uh, will certainly take with me. Um, and I did buy a tea post puller in order to do that. And of course the thought is that I'm hoping this is the last year that I'm at that garden, but I was thinking the same thing last year. In spite of that, I did put in plants that take a number of years to develop, like my asparagus and uh, raspberry bushes. Uh, I do believe in doing that. I don't care what garden you're in. You put in whatever you can that you uh, enjoy or want to um, have in your garden. And even if you're not the one who uh, gets to enjoy it, somebody else may down the road. So I don't really see any harm in doing that. Now, um, if I cannot dig up some of my asparagus roots and take them with me, that's fine. Somebody else will be able to enjoy them. So I was thinking while I was there, based on the fact that I had watched something um, with respect to an individual who had experienced a great amount of loss in the last year. And uh, she certainly uh, had people rally around her and um, she's okay, but still experiencing loss and, and thinking about that and um, putting yourself in a position where you go back and look at what it is that you've actually lost and I think of all the memories that you've had there. And I tell myself that's why I don't go back to my home that I sold a few years back. Um, and I had been there for well over 20 years, expected it to be my so-called forever home. And when I put in my raised garden beds, I did so with the intent that as I got older, they would be easier to maintain than what I'm doing now, which is definitely true. Uh, I had actually put in stone raised garden beds, not wooden ones. So uh, put screening, you know, limestone screening or rock. I don't know what you call that. We call it limestone screening. It's, um, you can pack it down. So I put that as a base and then piled on, not, uh, not, brick that you mortar, but ones that just sit on top of the other, and created three garden beds. One was my herb garden, and the other two were for my vegetables. And they weren't exceptionally large, but I managed to uh, do a lot of, grow a lot of plants in those gardens. And of course, I bought good soil, and uh, they were, they produced wonderfully for years and years and years. <sighs> and not only that, off to the side, <laughs> Mark dug 
a pond for me, which is what I wanted. So we had a little fish pond, and he uh, took some interest, and we ended up getting this great big huge rock that, uh, I don't know from where, some, somebody from some construction site helped to bring it over. And he sat there with a, a compressor and a chisels, and he carved a bowl in this rock so that we had a waterfall. And it was not, not bad. There was a lot of effort that went into that. And then, of course, having a pond was a lot more work than I thought it was. And fortunately, Mark took care of cleaning out the filters because that was one thing I, I mean, I, I had enough with my gardens. But yes, he really enjoyed feeding the fish. And any child that came over just used to get a thrill out of going over to feed the fish. Because as soon as you came close, they knew that food was coming and a whole swarm of fish would come to you to be fed. And it was always quite the sight. So, yeah, it's uh, memories. I, I understand memories. I don't cry over them. I don't fuss over them. I just think that maybe we have to make some new ones. And it's not the first time in my life that I experienced loss or a change you could call it a change because that's what it is you go from one life living life a certain way to living it another way and although mark and i are not young we still have plans for our future to do something else if they come to fruition wonderful if they don't i'm exactly where i'm supposed to be and I understand that. I understand that sometimes you have to face losses and sometimes you have, to, you have successes in life. And I have had my successes. I guess, I guess what it comes down to when I say that I am exactly where I should be at this moment, I think that the world is in that same position. And that may be a, an odd thing to say, but I think that the world going through all these terrible changes and upheavals and, and uh, changes is for a reason. And as much as we may not like what's happening and it may not be to our standards or what we would wish to have happen, um, some of these things happened <laughs> Uh, for educational sake, to know what you don't want. You know, sometimes a person learns through making mistakes. I think the world also learns from making mistakes. And sometimes you just have to make those mistakes in order to realize that that's what they are and you don't want to go that route. And, and they do claim that unless you're <laughs> going to learn from the past, you're, you're bound to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. And while that may be true, it's a new generation learning those. So they have not experienced the mistakes of the past. They can only hear about them or read about them and do not understand them as intimately as when you experience it yourself. Every parent knows you can tell a child till you're blue in the face not to do something, not to stick your finger in the socket, but <laughs> he only learns when he does stick his finger in the socket how <laughs> it's not really a good thing to do. So, yeah, I think that the world is going through uh, experiences like that, and I think that personally I have to trust God that the world is where it's supposed to be and that he will move it to where he wants on, in his own time. And if it means that there's a lot of suffering, so be it. It wouldn't be the first time that humanity has to be taught a lesson through suffering. Hopefully that isn't the case, but uh, it certainly appears to be going in that direction. So is there some catastrophic event that will occur that will wake the whole world up? Who knows? That is my belief. I believe that something will happen. And, you know, they used to, they used to claim, yeah, the aliens would land and that would unite the world. <laughs> I, 
I don't think it's going to be aliens. Hopefully it won't be a nuclear situation, but I suspect something catastrophic is going to have to happen before uh, countries learn to live together in peace. And I do believe it will happen at some point. I don't know when or how and what will take us there, but I do believe that the future of the world is bright and that we shouldn't be afraid. Yes, it could be dark right now, and yes, there's a lot of bad and there's a lot of evil and there's a lot of unnecessary hurt and pain. The world has to grow up. It's going through a, a lot of changes. Anyway, yeah, I'm sitting in my garden and thinking, yeah, no matter what, I have to trust God that I'm where I have. I am where I should be at this point in time, regardless of the fact that I may have plans. Hopefully my plans come to fruition, and if they don't, once again, not, don't sweat it, Tony. You're where you're supposed to be. I... <clears throat> If I had not sold my home, I would never have started this YouTube channel. I started this channel because I was bored. I had very little to do. <laughs> so am I where I'm supposed to be? I think so. Um, hopefully we've got a lovely little community and everyone will uh, talk to each other, not just to me. Uh, help each other out. I know a lot of people with a lot of experience that, that frequent this channel and uh, I'm sure that you can all um, have, I'm sure that you all have something that you can share with the rest of us. So feel free. Your channel as much as mine. Anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I am so exhausted. I am going to cut this short right now and see if I can post it. Hopefully not have to do too much editing out as well. Anyway, have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.